Hi everyone, myself Akash. I work as an engineer in Foundry Software Team, Samsung Semiconductor India R&D. And the topic for today's presentation is deep dive into Linux kernel egg patch. So let's get started. The agenda for today's discussion is about light patch and why do we need it? How code redirection is achieved using app trace? Light patch implementations using kpatch and kgraph. A light patch in mainline Linux kernel. Driver structure of a light patch. Limitations in driver structures approach. Why do we need ELF sections? K-Patch build and its example and at the end uh, limitations of lag patch. So what is kernel lag patch? Lag patch is the ability for the kernel to change the flow of code execution from a broken or vulnerable function to a new or fixed function during runtime. In most cases, the new function is the exact same as the function it is replacing, but with minor changes, such as adding a null pointer check, or changing the order of some locking mechanism, or adding a quick code fix. The code redirection is achieved with ftrace. So ftrace is a tool which allows you to trace kernel function call but it can also add and remove instructions from function as well. So like patch is implemented by compiling the new or fixed function into a kernel module and loading it into the system. Ftrace is then used to redirect call from the old function to the new function in the kernel module. Two ways with which we can write a like patch is first one is uh, writing driver using predefined light patch apis and compiling it as a kernel module second is source diff using kpatch build so in our presentation we will be covering both the approaches so next is why do we need light patch it is pretty common to see bug reports from linux machines which have very high uptime such as 6 to 12 months or sometimes even longer. For example, factory control machines. So these machines normally run important workloads which can't be interrupted for a reboot since they might be a part of critical public infrastructure or a busy build system. So the Ubuntu kernel team typically releases a new updated kernel for each distribution release on a three week SRU cycle with additional updates always within a day of two of a new CVE being released. So machines with important workloads are not going to reboot uh, in every, every six months or three weeks for each new kernel release. So keeping these machines safe and up to date uh, with security fixes is a must. So Life Patch eliminates the need for unplanned maintenance windows for high and critical uh, kernel vulnerabilities by patching the Linux kernel while the system runs. So the Life Patching infrastructure that is introduced in the Linux uh, kernel helps in updating the running kernel with security fixes by Life Patching it without any disturbance to the mission critical workloads running on a system or a uh, need uh, to start restart the applications. All the running processes in the system start seeing the fixed functions uh, or versions of the affected uh, kernel functions immediately without any delay after the kernel is live patched. So this allows you to benefit from improved service and application availability while keeping your infrastructure secure and up to date. And this is the motivation behind a live patch. So now code redirection with, with ftrace. So this feature is named function tracer or ftrace. It is a powerful uh, framework to measure several aspects within the kernel uh, like events and event interrupts. For example, uh, it can measure the latency of specific functions like writing to disk, 
etc. So light patching is achieved by redirecting the call uh, to a kernel function to its patched version with the fix and it depends on the f trace uh, tracing framework that is available in the Linux kernel to profile kernel functions during their invocation. Every redirection requires a callback to be registered with a ftrace framework to redirect any call uh, made to a function to its patched version. This diagram shows how ftrace is used to redirect call uh, from the old function to the new function in a kernel module. Here ftrace patches out the knob instruction uh, which is no operation instruction with a call which points towards the new function or the replacement function. If you see carefully the knob instruction is located uh, before the function starts manipulating the stack which means everything is consistent and when uh, the control jumps to the knob uh, no operation instruction f trace redirect it to new or fixed function thus bypassing a buggy or original function k patch this is the first implementation of a light patch k patch is a linux kernel patching feature created by red hat once uh, installed uh, k patch executes light patching of a running kernel with kpatch, a Linux kernel patch is applied without uh, necessitating a system reboot or restart. As a result, kpatch empowers system admins to apply crucial security patches to the kernel as soon as they are uh, needed without having to uh, worry about users logging off, scheduling reboot windows, or completing a uh, long running tasks. Kpatch effectively ampli amplifies system uptime and availability without sacrificing security or stability. Kpatch uses uh, a simple consistency model. Uh, Kpatch operates pretty much as explained uh, before by using ftrace to change the no instruction, no operation instruction in the old function to a call instruction uh, pointing to the new function. So as we can see in the diagram, which is just similar to what, what we just saw before uh, for ftrace, here uh, it's just an addition of kpatch block. So how kpatch works is uh, kpatch uh, keeps the system consistent uh, by first stopping all running tasks. The stack traces of each task is then examined. If the old function is not found in any of the task uh, stack traces, then ftrace applies the patch and all future calls to the patch function uh, will now use the new function. So this approach is atomic and safe. Uh, since there is only one view of the function at a time, uh, which is either old or new and uh, there are no consistency issues uh, that arise if a new function changes data structures uh, differently to the old function. The structure is passed to tasks which have not been migrated to the new functions. So the limitations of kpatch involve uh, not being able to modify data structures and if a process is still using the patch function, patching fails and all the tasks are restarted again to attempt uh, the patch at a later time. So there is some overhead uh, in stopping and starting all tasks which result in a small loss of service as those tasks are stopped. K-graph so this is the second implementation of light patch. Kgraph is developed by SUSE and is by far the most complex consistency model. Kgraph is a light patching feature for runtime patching of the Linux kernel without stopping the kernel. So this maximizes system uptime and thus system availability 
which is important for mission critical systems. So by allowing a dynamic patching of the kernel, uh, the feature also encourages users to install critical security updates without deferring them to a scheduled uh, downtime. KGraft employs a per task consistency model uh, where all tasks remain running on a system and tasks are patched one by one. So this gives no downtime at all since all tasks keep running during a live patch and patching can never fail. So if we see in this diagram, uh, we have taken uh, as an example. So for example, uh, let's say we have a user space process making a syscall and a live patch request come in midway through this syscall. If the syscall involved uh, calling the function which will be patched multiple times on a subsequent calling of the patched function, the semantics might have changed since the first time it, uh, it was executed because uh, if the locking mechanism has changed, you, we might be facing a deadlock situation which, uh, which will end in a, in a certain failure. So as, as we can see in the diagram here, uh, what KGraft does is it insert a check function which is the target of uh, the call instructions uh, which is replacing the no instruction, no operation instruction. The check function points to both uh, the old function and the new function. If the task has not yet been migrated uh, to use the new function, the check function jumps to the old function or the bug function and execution continues. If the task has been migrated, uh, then the new function or fixed function is called. This means that any user space process in a syscall or kernel task or interrupt handler still in kernel space will always use the old function. This continues until each user space process finishes its syscall or kernel task completes or interrupt handler complete. So this next diagram shows that all the bug tasks are then migrated over to the new function. Uh, when all tasks have been migrated, the check function is removed and the call instruction is updated to point directly to the new function. The benefits of KGraph is that uh, all the tasks are kept running during the live patching. Downsides include keeping two different implementations of the same function uh, around at the same time. So this can cause problems when long running processes like those waiting on disk or network IO uh, get stuck in a kernel space and won't be patched until they get complete. So this can lead to inconsistencies if the new function changes internal data structures uh, differently to the original since both function can still be executed uh, in side by side. So live patch in main, uh, mainline uh, Linux kernel. Live patch was mainline into the Linux kernel during the 4.0 development cycle. The live patch implementations is a hybrid between the kpatch and kgraft implementations uh, and, and taking the ba uh, best ideas from both. So live patch uh, using kgraft for task consistency and syscall exit migration alongside kpatch stack trace based switching. Patches are applied on a per task basis one task at a time and there is no downtime as tasks do, do not need to be stopped. This also means that the check function based solution is going to be used. So uh, the consistency model for mainline operates in a set of steps. So those steps are uh, first the stack traces of all uh, sleeping tasks is checked. If the function to be patched is not found in the stack trace, the task is patched to use the new function. 
if this fails for a particular task it will re-examine uh, the step trace periodically and attempt uh, to patch at a later point in time and the second step is to patch the task once uh, it completes and exit from the kernel space such as a syscall finishing or a interrupt handler completing so we will be considering uh, ubuntu in our context so ubuntu uses the live patch consistency model which has the best of both k patch and k graft all code is the same as what is shipped in uh, kernel mainland kernel and there are no custom changes So the upcoming three slides tells uh, about the driver structure of a lag patch. Please note uh, that the lag patch API have been changed over time. So we will discuss the lag patch API as found in the Linux 5.4 focal. So now you know that the lag patch is a kernel module. Uh, it follows the same process uh, required when writing a kernel module. So here we include uh, the kernel module header files such as module.h, kernel.h and the live patch header file uh, such as live patch.h and declare our module init and exit function pointers. So here uh, first we will map the new function to the old function by defining a struct of type klp underscore fun. So in this case called functions and fill in the members such as dot old underscore name and dot new underscore func. Struct klp underscore func is defined for each past function. It describes the relationship between the original and the new implementation of a particular function. The structure includes the name as a string of the original function. The function address is found via call sims uh, at runtime. Since we might need to replace more than one function in our live patch, we can create many of these function mappings since, fu since functions is an array. We then tell a uh, live patch what to patch with struct klp underscore object. Uh, struct klp underscore object defines an array of past functions uh, struct klp underscore fun in the same uh, object. Uh, where the object is either VM Linux or a module name. The structure helps uh, to group and handle functions for each object together. We set uh, dot funds to our array of functions and set uh, dot name to be another live patch module. This has a dependency on or simply null uh, if we want to target uh, VM Linux. So live patch underscore init function uh, will contains APIs for registering and enabling our patch module. Live patch underscore exit function uh, will disable and uh, deregister the module and new underscore xyz is our patched function. So thus uh, when the original function is called uh, it is redirected to the patched function which is new underscore xyz. Uh, at the end this is wrapped into a struct klp underscore patch. Uh, where we declare the module name and the object struct. This uh, is the structure uh, we pass as a reference to uh, when klp underscore enable underscore patch is called. So struct klp underscore patch uh, defines an array of patched, uh, patched ob objects which is KL, uh, struct klp underscore object. This structure handled all patched functions. The whole patch is applied only when all the patch function patched symbols are found. The only exceptions are symbols from objects that have not been loaded yet. 
a function that is non uh, traceable by the app trace framework cannot be live patched live patching depends on app trace for redirection to a patched function uh, of a patched version of a function as uh, the next step in the registration process the callback for the original function uh, xyz is registered with the app trace framework and after the registration is successful the patched version of the function is enabled uh, through the klp underscore enable underscore patch uh, application binary interface abi uh, the klp underscore unregister and unregister underscore patch abi uh, unregisters the app trace handler for the patched version of the function and restores restores uh, the call to the original function instead of the live patch version of the function so we can uh, build the driver with the following live patch make file which is similar to any kernel uh, driver make file for that first you need to install a compiler and the kernel headers uh, for your running kernel as apt get install uh, linux hyphen headers hyphen u name hyphen r apt get install build underscore hyphen essential then go ahead and run make after the patch module is generated uh, insert a live patch module uh, using ins mode after that uh, you can see your new function getting a live patch without even need uh, for a reboot after the module is inserted, a directory with the module uh, name is created uh, in the sys kernel uh, live patch uh, where the patch can be enabled or disabled. So coming into the uh, limitations in driver structure approach. So we can use this approach when we want to write a, a new complete new basic function say for example changing the kernel uh, CMD parameter. So this approach won't work uh, when we want to patch the existing code. Uh, but if we try to patch the existing code uh, with this approach so during build time we may face error because uh, when the module object build it cannot be linked because the compiler does not know the offsets or the locations of the function which reside uh, in the unstripped and stripped vm linux binaries so to resolve this issue uh, we need to add elf sections to the object file which will tell the kernel uh, like patch subsystem how to apply the relocations uh, for each of these functions into the kernel that we are targeting. So here uh, comes the need uh, of the elf sections. So there are two elf sections that need to be add on. First one is shf underscore rela underscore live patch. Second is shn underscore live patch. So shf underscore rela underscore live patch is used to declare the functions which need to be redirected with app trace. That is the functions that are actually being live patched. shn underscore live patch uh, are all the local symbol uh, that the fixed function calls uh, and need to be fixed up. Each section needs uh, entries of the form dot klp dot rela dot obj name dot section underscore name where uh, dot klp dot rela denotes the relocation section name which is prefixed uh, with the string uh, dot klp dot uh, rela uh, then obj name uh, denotes the name of the object uh, which can be VM Linux or the name of the module uh, to which uh, the relocation section belongs follows immediately after the prefix uh, then uh, section underscore name uh, denotes the actual name of the section to which this relocation section uh, belongs 
So as an, an example for SHF underscore Rilla underscore Zip patch would be uh, this dot klp dot Rilla dot vm Linux dot text dot mem info underscore proc underscore show. So here uh, mem info underscore proc underscore show is the patched function. Uh, these ELF sections need uh, to uh, know the addresses and offsets from the VM Linux binary. So here comes the question why a live patch need to write its own relocations. A typical live patch module uh, contains patched versions of the function that can reference non-exported global symbol and uh, non-included local symbol. So relocations uh, referencing these types of symbol cannot be left in uh, as it is since the kernel module loader cannot resolve them and will therefore reject the live patch module. So for this uh, we cannot apply the relocations that affect modules uh, which is not yet loaded at patch module load time. So live patch is solving this problem by embedded uh, embedding uh, the special uh, ELF section which is dynamic RILA module ELF output. So using this uh, uh, dynamic RILA sections uh, live patch can uh, resolve symbol while well, taking into account its scope and uh, what module uh, the symbol uh, belongs to and then manually apply the dynamic relocations. So now coming on to the kpatch build. So it is an automated uh, build program which can generate uh, live patches from source diff and programmatically fetches and insert these ELF sections which contain the symbol uh, relocation table. Kpatch build is a collection of tools which converts uh, a source diff patch to a patch module. They work by compiling the kernel both uh, with and without the source patch, comparing the binaries and generating a patch module which uh, includes new binary versions of the functions to be replaced. The primary steps in kpatch uh, build are uh, first one is uh, build the unstripped VM Linux for the kernel, patch the source tree, uh, rebuild VM Linux and monitor which objects are being rebuilt. These are the changed objects. Then recompile each changed object with hyphen f function hyphen sections hyphen f data hyphen sections uh, resulting in the changed patched objects. Unpatch the source, source tree. Then recompile each changed object with hyphen f function hyphen sections f hyphen f data hyphen sections resulting in the changed original objects. So for every change object, uh, use create hyphen uh, diff hyphen object to do the following task. Uh, analyze each original or patched object pair for patchability. Then add dot kpatch dot funds and dot rilla dot kpatch dot funds elf sections to the uh, uh, output object. The kpatch core module uh, uses this to determine the list of functions that need to be redirected using ftrace. Then add dot kpatch dot dynamic relas and dot rela dot kpatch dot dynamic rela elf sections to the output object. This will be used to resolve references to non included local and non exported uh, global symbol. These relocations will be resolved by the kpatch core module. Generate the resulting output object uh, containing the new and modified sections. 
then link all the output objects into accumulative objects and at the end generate the patch module so the steps are needed to build kpatch build source code is uh, first we need to install some packages and dependencies then we will clone uh, the kpatch source code and will build the source the next step is to download the ddeb uh, which is debug deb uh, package for the kernel we wish to make a live patch module for a list of all the kernel ddeb packages can be found at the ddeb uh, package repository so we will be targeting 5.4 kernel for that we need to download and install a linux image unsigned 5.4 generic debug sim dot ddeb package the resulting debug uh, vm linux will be placed under a lib debug uh, boot directory so ddeb package is generally a debug symbol package for debugging symbols for a vm linux binary so here uh, we have implemented one functionality uh, which will give some of all the untracked kernel memory allocations such as slab uh, vmalloc per cpu kernel stack page tables socket uh, buffers etc so for that uh, we have taken uh, a kernel 5.4 source and using mem info.c uh, file which is under uh, fs proc directory from in the kernel source uh, here we won't be discussing uh, about the patch functionality implemented uh, because our focus here is to implement the changes and get the diff out of it so as we discussed before kpatch build operates on source diff so we will be taking a diff for our patched function so now uh, we got the source diff so here we need to take care of one important point uh, which is the kernel source that we are targeting we should uh, take a diff from that kernel source code only if we don't follow this approach our patch won't build and it will throw error during the compilation time so we will compile our uh, patch file using kpatch build binary so kpatch build works uh, by first downloading the source archive of the kernel you are targeting which is, uh, is determined by the vm linux package you pass in in the uh, cmd uh, from there uh, the standard vm linux is built normally once that completes the source tree is uh, patched with the patch you specified and it is rebuilt again as you know that only mem info.o got changed so the single object is compiled again uh, with hyphen f function hyphen section hyphen f data hyphen sections in both the patched and the unpatched forms then each patched unpatched and patched object set is then analyzed by create hyphen diff hyphen object to determine what functions have been modified and to extract the changed functions this program also checks for live patch compatibility the special part of create hyphen diff hyphen object is uh, that it creates the necessary either symbol relocation section to the patched uh, object file it adds uh, the kpatch.funs and dot rela dot kpatch.funs symbol uh, which tell f trace what functions are actually going to be live patched it also adds dot kpatch dot dynamic rela and dot rela dot kpatch dot dynamic rela symbol which are used to fix up symbol uh, relocations for local function call in the fixed function to symbol in vm linux 
so from there uh, k patch build generates a new kernel module containing all the light patches uh, which is ready to be used so we insert the module uh, using ins mode also we can check our light patch function status with rd message logs so as you can see in the uh, mem, mem kernel functionality got implemented uh, light patch and gave some of untracked uh, kernel memory allocations so for permanently installing a light patch we should give k patch install to our patch module uh, for listing all installed light patches we should give k patch list for those elf sections uh, we can examine the kernel module to see them uh, using read elf bin with hyphen hyphen sections and hyphen hyphen uh, relox flag with our patch module so coming on to light patch limitations Light patching is only for critical security problems. Linux kernel patches can fix vulnerabilities if the problem can be isolated to small and specific portions of the kernel code. However, if the problem is complex and affects many functions or affects data structures, light patching can't be done. So only functions that can be traced could be light patched linux kernel security fixes must be written by experts even uh, simple patches require an advanced knowledge of linux and c if the patch is intended uh, for production servers it must be thoroughly tested across a wide range of platforms and kernel versions and k probes uh, in the original functions are ignored uh, when the code is redirected to the new implementations so this comes to an end of a presentation uh, i thank you all for being a part of this presentation and i thank whole linux foundation committee for giving opportunity to showcase to showcase our work if you have any doubts regarding this presentation Uh, please feel free to ask in the chat thanks